Good morning and welcome to Real Talk with Tamara. As you guys come into the room, please hit the like button. Also, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. I hope that you guys are doing okay this morning. Um, I want you guys to know how much I appreciate the people that have been subscribing to the channel and all of my loyal subscribers that have been here and then consistently come over to support the channel. You guys mean so much to me. I appreciate that so much. You absolutely rock. Um, I'll, you know, also, if you would like to support the channel, you can do it via Cash App or you can do their super thanks with the heart. Um, right at the bottom of this video, okay? But definitely hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, because I see slightly more people that are unsubscribed is coming over to look at my video still. The number is still higher. So um, I know some of you come over to steal. The rest of you just kind of forget to hit the subscription button. So please do that, okay? And the ones that still in may as well subscribe to here. Anyways, because I know you got the notifications button on, just hit the subscription button. Anyways, um, I wanted to talk about the empery is real, okay? Um, you know, in the wake of what has happened to, to a big scar, okay? Um, of course, when it happened, it had everybody shook and shocked. And Big Scar was such a talented artist out of Memphis, only 22 years old. Uh, it was extremely sad what happened to him. The circumstances surrounding his death has been, uh, you know, th there have been things, you know, smoke in the air. Uh, people are saying that it was an overdose and it could have very well be then. Now, I don't like to get into conspiracy theories, but I think when you're talking about the music industry right now in this day and time, there ain't no such thing as strange anymore because we're finding out that a lot of the things that we thought was only made for a damn movie is actually happening in real life, that they are doing a lot of this stuff in real life. You know, I've always said that when they put it in the movie, we need to look for it because the people that make these movies are involved in the entertainment industry and the rap game is an ent entertainment industry, is the entertainment industry. And I think that they found it easy to prey on vulnerable, talented black men and women because they come from poor conditions. What has me pissed off is that they've get, given a few cuckabug head, cuckabug heads a, a few more crumbs, okay? to participate in luring these young black men and women into the game just to take their life or screw them over, okay? And when I, they take their lives one way or the other, they either take their lives um, by sending them to the grave or they take their lives by financially raping them to the point of them going into a depression and sometimes they never recover. That's still taking their lives, right? That's why I say the effery is real. And it makes me mad as hell. That's the, reason I, the reasons I get on here and I fuss because it seems that a lot of people have targeted Memphis. Okay? Because like I said, you know, I am passionate about my city. Okay? It's mine. I sure am. Okay? So, you know... I think, you know, in the wake of all of this and in the wake of what has happened to to young Scar, and I keep saying young Scar, I think I'd be wanting to say young Dolph and and it it, you know, you know how that is, but it's it's big scar. It it is, it's big scar. Um but in the wake of what has happened to Big Scar, you know, it and he was he was uh it was already a tragedy. And what I was trying to get to is, you know, a lot of people are saying that he overdosed, and that could very well be so. You know, there were rumors that he may have been on drugs and things of that nature. I, I don't know. I just know that Big Scar was a very talented artist, and you know, he could have overdosed, but you know, did somebody help him to do it? Did somebody give him something? 
you know, because it's easy to write people off, right? It's easy to write them off when and say, well, you know, it was just an overdose when there is a history of them doing drugs. I think I got on here when Big Scar died, when I found out that he had died. And I said that um, what record companies are going to start doing is they are going to start because, you know, it the authorities is really, really, you know, I think the FBI has really gotten involved in, in what is going on in the record industry. And so instead of it, you know, a lot of these record heads and stuff, they brought, they've killed so many black men. They've brought uh, the attention of the public, especially in the wake of this young dog situation. And so it forces the authorities to have to do something because now everybody is talking about it and they're tired of it. Right. So now what record companies, in order to continuously get that insurance money, what they've started doing is, uh, hey, giving them overdoses. You you give them give them something. Put something in uh, something extra in their drug that's going to let them sleep their life away. They never wake up and things of that nature. I'm not saying that's what happened, but hell, I don't know if it didn't happen. Right? That's why I say the effery is real. And it seems like it's open season on the Memphians, especially these talented young dudes that come from nowhere. You know, how come, you know, you know, with, with it, let me just get to Gucci, man, because I'm going to get to the rest of it because I'm yeah, I have so much stuff going through my head. I'd be so passionate and mad because, you know, I'm passionate, you know, because that's my city. OK, you know, a lot of people don't like it when I say I'm passionate, but I am. I'm a grown woman. I can be whatever I want to stay off my damn page if you don't like it. OK. You ain't got to go talk about it. Stay off my shit. That's what sane people do. If I don't like somebody, if I got an issue with them, I stay off their stuff because I'm not going to beef with you. Okay. A lot of people like to beef because that is what they are known to do. You know what I mean? That's how they get their views. I can't beef with you. Find somebody else. My lawyer can beef with you though, because I know what you are about. I just ain't said nothing. I can't beef with you, though. Find somebody else. Okay? But I want to pull up, okay, what Big Scar's brother said. That's what I want to do. You going to pay for the phone. You blocked them. That's not real, cuz. On God, that's not real. You ain't straight. You ain't straight. That's them folks. Come on now, cuz. You, 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 you plug. On God, that ain't straight, cuz. You on here trying to act all real. You post this guy talking about some long live him, bro. You ain't do nothing, cuz. On God. And you ain't getting them chains, cuz. You can't get them chains. There's no way you can get them chains. It ain't no way that's happening. Come on now, fool. You tripping, cuz. Thought we were just gonna let that go, cuz. No, it's over. You play. And we don't need your money, nigga. We don't need your money to pay for his front of nigga. He was gonna get buried. Either way, it's just a point that you supposed to be his CEO and you supposed to be this, this, and that, and you don't lie like that, cuz. How do you even feel real with yourself? It ain't straight, cuz. You shouldn't even feel straight with yourself. On God, you shouldn't, cuz. I, I ain't nothing with you, cuz. Then I hope you ain't talking about give you the time because you think we finna use them to, to, to cool video. No, no, man, we ain't finna know. We don't want to be a part of nothing like that. Come on now, bro. You, 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 you that, that one right, bro. On God, that one right. You ain't straight, cuz. You got on the internet. Bro, when they text you and ask you about Scott Funeral, cuz, you told them folks. Did the Keisha birthday coming up? Now y'all rich, y'all can celebrate her birthday any day. Come on now, cuz. You playing with my brother like he just dead. Like, come on now, cuz. 
You playing work, bro. My brother just ain't no nigga you can. Nah, bro, my brother mean something to us, nigga. What you mean? This ain't that and you not getting them chains, bro. You ain't. Okay, y'all. Now, y'all heard what his brother said, and I could tell that his brother, and I don't know if that's his brother, his blood brother, or if it's someone that he's really close to that's like a brother. He looked like he could be his brother. But it hurts me in looking at that because a lot of these young dudes like him kind of represent what they are taking advantage of that's really passionate you know you could tell he's he's passionately hurt when he said my brother meant something to us it really it hurts me to to see that gucci man is wrong he talked about he got a you know a by keisha something for her birthday um i thought they said when he took his big teeth ass to jail that uh keisha flipped his money that's the reason why he turned turned her into a housewife don't get me started I thought he said that's why he turned her into a housewife because he gave her some money and she took his money and flipped it and made it long while he had his big teeth ass in jail. Now, I, I've had my suspicions about Gucci Mane for a minute. I was never settled. I, I just always had these unsettling feelings, even dating back to when, you know, young, young Dolph was assassinated. But, you know, I, I thought, well, maybe, you know, if something was going on with him, Pre would recognize it. Because y'all know I rocks with Pre. Okay? I want to see those young men win. Okay? Because their leader was assassinated uh, to keep them. One of the reasons is because some of these other folks didn't want to see them be great. Right? As well as their leader. But I've had my suspicions about it. The young man said that he he blocked the funeral company. Now, in Memphis, the most expensive funeral, because I know the cheapest ones be five, six thousand dollars. I know it's gone up now, maybe seven now, seventy five hundred. You can have a funeral, get a casket and have a funeral for seventy five hundred. That is the packages. Um, a really, and, and it still be nice, maybe a somewhat expensive and that ain't even expensive 10 to 12,000 are the packages. You mean to tell me all the insurance money that this nigga is trying is getting ready to get off a big scar that I'm willing to bet. He's not going to give his family a dime of as well as I'm sure big scar was popular. People in Memphis loved him. People outside of Memphis loved him. Folks was ready all over the world to see him on tour with Key Glock. Okay. And so you're trying to, he's getting ready. To, I'm willing to bet that he owns Big Scars uh, uh, Masters. Okay. So I'm sure he's getting some residuals, even um, because when artists die, their music, their music is streamed more. So I'm willing to bet he has benefited from that. And he'll block the damn funeral home. He can't give the young man's mother nothing on his funeral. And then he said he want the chain back. That is an insult. That's to me, that's the effery that I'm talking about. Okay. That's the effery that I'm talking about. To me, that sounds like somebody who did not give a damn about his artist and could have had somebody to put something in his in 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 his lean or whatever it was that overdosed him. Okay. I wouldn't, I, I I just like I said, I've had my suspicions about him for a minute. And and they could be null and void, but it don't stop me from having them. It means nothing that he put out songs when these young men die. Hell, he it don't mean nothing. He he getting the views and making the money. That's why he put it out. It don't mean he love them. But here he is, a rich CEO, 
that is going to benefit off of Scar way more than his family ever could. And he couldn't pay for his funeral. Is he going to sign the masters and stuff to make sure that his mother and all of them benefit from uh, all of this good music that Scar has? Because he ain't supposed to. He's sitting up talking about he want the chain back. I wouldn't give him the damn chain back either. I'd hawk it. If they didn't want to just keep it as a memory of their brother, but I'd go hawk the motherfucker. Excuse me, Lord. Okay, because that is an insult on so many levels. The effery. But this is what is happening. A, a lot of these vultures, these record labels to include, that's what makes me so damn mad about Gotti. Have targeted a lot of these young dudes in Memphis. Okay. And they are using them. It's a lot of talent around the Georgia area. How come he ain't getting no talent from around that Georgia area? Okay. And the reason he ain't doing that, I believe, is because he can't do it, really. Maybe the people around that area know how he is. A lot of the, the a lot of the young dudes and, and the talent. That's around that area. Maybe they don't want to mess with him because they don't tell us everything. But I think it's a darn shame that he would do this to this young man. I do. I think it's a damn shame. But like I said, I can't say that I'm really surprised because my antennas, even though I don't say a whole lot about him, have been gone up about him, even surrounding this young Dolph situation. Because let me just say this. I can remember. That somebody said to me that I don't know how um, how Gucci Mane really felt about Dolph. I, I I don't know if it was really real because Gucci Mane don't be feeling nobody that he can't really make a whole lot of money off of. He be wanting to make a whole lot of money off of people. And Dolph had it where couldn't nobody really make no money off of him. He paid them. And then that was it. They couldn't make no residuals. Dolph made money, made money off of his own name. And Gucci Mane couldn't have cared about him like that. Okay. Because he don't like people. And they said that in the very beginning that he can't, that he can't make, make a whole lot of money off of. Okay. Now his relationship with Dolph could have been real. I don't know, but I'm just telling you what was told to me. All right. So I, you know, I just, I think that, that this is, is messed up and it's sad because with young, uh, big scars music, um, with his music, the way people love big scar, you would think, especially if, if, if Gucci Mane saw, and I know big scar was, a, an adult but it seems like to me he would have been pulling on him saying man you too talented trying to get him some help but the thing about it is a lot of these record heads like to see these young dudes crash out they like to see them on drugs they give them a bone they give them a little bit of money because it's more money than they've ever had a hundred thousand dollars wouldn't do a uh, big scar no justice He's worth way more than $100,000. He was worth way more then. But it, you have to understand where Big Scar come from. That's a lot of money to him. So they take it. And that's why they go in the hoods and get these dirt poor. Dude, I'm going to tell you what. Um, I was looking at this this uh, vlog that used to come on. And it was some Mr. Marcello that used to be signed to No Limit. Used to have a vlog. And I remember he had Fee and another guy on there. But anyways, they work with Lil Wayne. They helped to kind of, um, I think they was his managers or something in the beginning, but they they just helped with um, NBA Young Boy. I think, you know, they work with him, helped to discover him or something, okay? And I remember um, one of the guys asked him about NBA Young Boy and he, you know, why he wasn't able to pull on him and get him settled down and things of that nature when he was getting in trouble. But he, the other guy was kind of funny. And I cannot think of his name. And 
they asked them, why are these, you know, as a, a industry person, you know, how come y'all are not helping these young dudes um, sign these contracts? Because I, I, you know, with these contracts or whatever, because I wouldn't sign them, you know, and I can't remember it verbatim, but he did say something to the uh, fix of, he says, you have to think about in the industry. He said, if I got a contract and, um, and I go to somebody and they question that contract. He said, I'm not going to sign it. The the guy that was interviewing, uh, working with Marcelo said, well, I, ain't, I wouldn't sign it if you gave it to me. He said, I ain't going to give it to you. If I give you a contract and you start questioning that contract, I ain't going to fool with you. But what I am going to do, I'm going to go to somebody that's buddy as hell that can't really rap and we're going to make him popular. As long as he signed that contract, we ain't going to deal with nobody that's going to question our contract. We're going to go give it to somebody that ain't. The person that questioned the contract could be a hard ass rapper, but we're going to go give it to the person that ain't, that ain't going to, that, that ain't necessarily as hard, but they ain't question that contract. And that is what is going on. That's why I say the effery is real. They're continuously taking advantage of these young African-American men. And it ain't just in Memphis. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. You have hoods in every city. But for some reason, the devil has definitely targeted Memphis. They've tapped into how that, that there is, it's impoverished, number one. Okay. Poverty ignites crime. And a lot of these young dudes are just jumping because they don't know anything about the business. All they know is they got a talent and they're hungry. And instead of these fuck niggas teaching them the recipe, they're working for the record heads, them devils in them back rooms. And then they're ultimately taking the lives of these young dudes and it's messed up. They're helping to do it for money and fame. And that's why my favorite scripture is God says, when I get them back, you're going to see me get them back. I'd be so glad when, when, when the feds finished busting up this situation to include some of these vloggers that they have hired and put on here. That's doing this hacking. They got, they got these networking people that's working with their vloggers. That's helping to put out this fake ass information to hack folks shit in the FBI on this shit. So you, it's a lot of these vloggers you ain't gonna even see to further help ruin the careers of those that was like Dolph to put out fake information, okay? That they're be independent because they working for some of these record labels. They got a lot of crackhead fuck niggas on here doing the exact same thing to about justice for such and such. Fuck nigga, you know you hired by CMG or Heavy Camp, bitch. Okay. Whew. I get passionate because, you know, I'm passionate. Okay. But it, it upsets me that this stuff is going on. Okay. It's going on. But rest in peace to Scar. I'm going to have to cut this short. Rest in peace to Scar. But Gucci Mane is wrong for this one but he been wrong though you know it it you know i hate what happened to big scar and i'm still not sure of what really happened to him yeah he could have overdosed but did somebody help him too did they send somebody to give him a bad drug because it seems that um, Gucci Mane has no type of emotional attachment. Seems like he don't even give a damn about him, period. Nothing. Anytime you sitting up talking about you got to buy your wife something and you can't pay ten to 12000 for a funeral, that's a man that don't give a damn about this artist that he's getting ready to get all this insurance money for and, and more than likely own his master's. That's a damn shame before God. It's a, he don't even like him. And then told his family to return the chain. Yeah, he didn't like Scar Hill. Did he do something? To, was he the one that told him to give him a drug? You know, I don't know. If if that happened, 
you know, I don't know. I'm speculating now. But I will say this, I don't put it, I don't put it past any of these people in the industry because the effery is real. And these people are doing anything for a dime. And killing these young black men have become a sport to them. I don't give a damn. They on drugs. I, I got to make this insurance money. They don't care. Okay. And they have targeted Memphis. Okay. They've targeted Memphis. That's why I say young dog was very important and they took him out. And as soon as they took him out, all these vultures really started coming to Memphis digging because he was teaching them the recipe independence to help to save their lives. And these F niggas worked at assassinating him so that they could stay in bondage because a lot of them are slaves. And a lot of these other young dudes could stay in bondage. And now they're doing all that they can to deter his artists that he taught and left that legacy behind to. But hey, Key Glock, Kenny Money, Snoop Bands, Paper Route Woo, shout out to them. Keep the legacy going. Help these young men in Memphis, whatever Dolph taught y'all, make sure y'all teach them. Continue that. Because that's one of the reasons that he was taken down because a lot of these record heads don't want these young dudes to ever have any financial liberation. They feel like all of the wealth is supposed to be laid up for them and their families only. And it's a damn shame. Okay? But anyways, you guys, please like, share, and subscribe. I want you guys to know how much I appreciate you so much. Okay? I'll talk with you later.